Hi, and welcome to this video on how to increase your blog traffic in 2019. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien. I'm an online marketing and social media coach, and I help you move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online through to investing with you using storytelling, strategy, and systems. And today, as I said, I want to talk a little bit about how we can go about increasing the traffic we get to our blog or to our website overall, but specifically I'm talking about our, uh, our blogs. And I want to talk about what I'm doing on my website um, and on my blog that is helping me to increase my traffic. Um, it's a gradual process, but it is increasing my traffic. And I want to share the, the tips that have been working for me that I know can uh, really help you as well with your blog if you're getting a bit stuck. Now, sometimes we get into a space where we don't want to keep uh, Advertising, we don't want to keep investing in advertising, even though I do believe um, advertising is a wonderful avenue. If we can attract some free traffic, then that's a wonderful opportunity as well. And this is something that, um, having been blogging since 2009, so I've been blogging for 10 years now, a lot of what um, I do now, I wish I had known back in the beginning. Some of what I did that attracted lots of traffic in the beginning was uh, flukes, to be honest. But I've been able to study a lot of that and see why things uh, worked and then obviously putting things to practice now. So obviously we're in the middle of the year as I'm shooting this video. So I've had another six months to play or five months to play um, with my blog and I want to share some of those tips with you now. Now the first tip is to look at your search engine optimization or SEO. If you have no idea what any of that means, what it means in very layman's terms is that when I go into Google and I search a, search, um, a particular phrase or uh, keywords, then a blog post comes up uh, or an article comes up that I can read that will help uh, answer the question that I've popped into Google. So that's what we're looking for is what are the things that people are actually putting into Google that allow us uh, for, you know, that allow people to find content that we write. Now there are something like 200 factors on why uh, something ranks on the first page of Google and not. But the first thing that you need to focus on and um, one of the key things is obviously the keywords. Now how do we find keywords that we are going to rank for? Now in the past I have done hours and hours worth of research trying to find keywords that I think would be a good fit. And um, that's all wonderful, but it's so hit and miss. So there are some, some shortcuts to being able to find content that you can rank for much more quickly. And the way to do that is to use Google Console. Now, if you've never used it before, what it is is something that attaches to um, your website. So it's, it's separate from Google Analytics. However, you can read the results inside Google Analytics. And I might do a separate video on actually how to set up Google Console for your business. Um, but what it does is it will um, collate all of the traffic that comes uh, into your in, into your website via search engines, via Google, Bing, Yahoo, and those sorts of things. So what we are, are most interested in inside of Google Search Console is actually the queries that people put into uh, Google that we rank for. Now, sometimes we rank for certain keywords or um, phrases that we don't actually get any traffic for and Google Search Console has all that data there. So we might be ranking page five for a keyword um, and I might try and find an example that if we were writing about um, social media, just as an example, I'm gonna try and pick something, but say that uh, we were ranking for the term social media template, but it's, uh, we're ranking about page you know, 10, and uh, but we're still getting quite a bit of um, impressions for that, and Google Search Console shows us that. What we need to then do is say, okay, where, where are they finding that piece of content? Where are they, you know, where is that keyword? in my website. So if you can find where that is, and sometimes that's as simple as putting in search, uh, social media template, and then your website name or address, and um, you'll, see, you'll soon see where that keyword is coming up. If you can find that that piece of content isn't really well optimized for that, because maybe it's social media post ideas, 
which isn't really um, a social media template as such. So you might think there's an opportunity for me to write another piece of content that is specifically using the keyword phrase social media template, particularly if that keyword also happens to have quite a lot of um, search per month. You're getting quite a few uh, um, impressions for it. And as far as where you're ranking, you're not ranking too far down the path. So it's an opportunity for you to be able to create a piece of content using that specific keyword. And that's how I find a lot of the uh, content that I write on my blog post, not always, uh, on my blog, sorry, not always, but um, often that's where a lot of the opportunities um, uh, are found for me is in Google Search Console, rather than spending hours and hours in different uh, SEO tools to try and find specific keywords. Um, this is a really quick way to find a keyword that you can rank for quickly. Next, we need to write the content. And I have other blog posts that are focused on how to write content, but as far as the SEO side of writing that blog post, what we need to do is try and get that keywords, in our example, social media template, into the headline of the blog post. We need to get it into the introduction section, so the first couple, you know, first two paragraphs at least, have that keyword in there. We need to sprinkle it in a couple of times throughout the content, depending on how long your, your um, blog post is. And we need to optimize the image. So that means that the image title that we use in the blog post is actually called social-media-template.com you know, PNG or JPEG, depending on what your file is, um, that we actually use the name of that as well. And when you upload it, there'll be a section in WordPress, if you're using WordPress, called alt text. And we want to use the keyword social media template in that alt text section as well. Um, the other thing to look at as you write this and as you, particularly as you're uploading it into WordPress, again, I'm using WordPress, um, if you're using another system, um, similar applies. But uh, we want the URL to be, so in my case, it would be kellyobryan.com.au forward slash um, social dash media dash template. That's what I want the URL to be. And you can e uh, edit the URL of any blog post that isn't live yet. Never ever edit uh, something that's already live. That's another topic for another day. But if it's not live yet and you're just doing the draft version, you click on the permalink and you can edit it. It'll be called permalink in WordPress just so that you understand the terminology. But it's pretty, that's generally your, your, um, your URL that we're editing first, then obviously making sure that it's in our, um, in our, sub, our title and, of course, in the body. Now some formatting tips for you for when you're putting this WordPress blog post together. We've already talked about permalinks and we've already talked about the title of the blog post and we've talked about sprinkling that keyword throughout our, um, our post and we can use what are called um, secondary or semantic keywords. So it's, uh, keywords that aren't specifically social media template but it might be things like a Facebook template or it might be um, social media, um, you know, template guide or something, other things that are related to that main keyword. So we can sprinkle those throughout. But as far as formatting, uh, when we have those keywords in there, if we can bold at least one of the social media template keywords within it, if we can find an opportunity in the subheadings of that um, blog post as well, then we can be putting um, social media template in one of the subheadings. And if you can italicize one of them as well, these little formatting things um, can actually help give more uh, signals to, uh, to Google that this is the keyword that we are optimizing for. Now the next thing is if you have an SEO plugin. I use all-in-one SEO um, and I have a lot of clients who also use Yoast for SEO. So uh, whatever the plugin is that you happen to use, generally in WordPress at the bottom of the blog post, right at the very end of the page, so beyond all of the settings, you'll see your um, SEO plugin, um, the meta section. So what the meta, dis meta um, section is, is what is going to be shown in Google. So what we actually have in the blog post, post can actually be different to what we want to show in Google. And when we think about writing this section and putting in the words and the keywords here, what we're thinking about is um, if somebody can't, comes and puts in social media template into Google and then the results show up, 
we want to be able to be the most clickable response. We don't always necessarily need to be number one, but we need to have the one that makes that entices them to click in us. So we're kind of thinking about things from an advertising perspective. This is like an ad in Google. So again, we need a title that will be under 60 characters. So if your title in your actual blog post is longer than 60 characters, then in this meta section in the plugin, you'll need to ensure that it's under 60 um, characters. But again, we want to make sure that that keyword is in the actual um, meta title. Now the next part after that will be the meta description. And this is just a bit of a synopsis and the bit that becomes a little bit clickable as well of what the blog post is about. And again, we want to try and squeeze that um, keyword into our meta description as well. But think about other things that people might be searching. We can use those keywords within the description. And again, I think you have 160 characters off the top of my head. Um, here, so it's not a lot of copy to write but you do need to make it clickable and enticing for people. And then the last section is the keyword itself. So making sure that social media template is the actual keyword there. And depending on what tool you're using, you can put those semantic or those secondary keywords in there as well. So um, that can be really helpful for giving, again, signals to uh, Google of what your blog post is about. Now, another optimization tip is about link building. Now there are two sorts of links. We have the links where we link to ourselves. So we might have other blog posts that can link to this new blog post we're writing and vice versa, we can have links in the blog post we're currently writing that link out to other content that we've written that helps enhance this piece of content and also um, helps with um, keeping your bounce rate uh, low as well so that people are looking at more of your website, they're staying on your website for longer, which is one of those um, triggers or one of those um, uh, 200 factors that helps you rank is how long someone stays on the piece of content. So again, we want to have really good uh, content, um, not always has to be super long, but uh, content that will keep them on the page for longer. And the other uh, tip is, of course, um, the links that go out that keep them on your website still. So they're leading to other blog posts, sales pages, um, opt-in offers, whatever your blog post is optimised for. And there is another blog post on that topic on what the goal of your blog post is and how to know what to write about. But um, and I'll link to that um, from here as well. But the um, other links that you can have, so we have our internal links, as I've just talked about. The other ones are external links. So it's having other people link to your content as well. Now, of course, we can share our uh, blog post to social media, and if we can do that, that's fabulous. But if we can get someone else who has um, some great SEO juice around their blog uh, or website to link to us, then that's um, even more powerful again. So uh, looking for those, um, those backlinks to our particular blog post to help it uh, rank, because again, it's another factor to Google that if this content must be so good if other people are linking to it. It must be a valuable resource, so I'll bump it up in um, the ranking, in the Google rankings. So the other thing I do with new blog posts and even with old blog posts that I might optimize, I might optimize is to go into Google Search Console, which you know all about now, and uh, I, I put it into there and I have it refetched or I have it indexed. Um, if it's if it's a new one so that uh, Google can find it quicker and help me rank uh, for that blog post faster as well. So it's a really good way to um, to try and get uh, some of that SEO stuff happening a little bit faster than just waiting for Google to crawl your website again. So that can be a really cool trick to do. And of course, as I've just said, I re-optimize or I optimize um, older blog posts so again, um, maybe a bit down the track, you'll come back to this particular blog post. You look at ways that you might be able to put other keywords in there, um, in, in expand on a topic that you have in there, add another image in. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can update it, but Google loves when we update our content. And again, then we can go and re-index it um, in Google Search Console to, to show Google that yes, we've just updated this and then want you to um, take a look at it again. So there are just a few tips on what I do when I write a new blog post and the way that I'm able to rank some of my blog posts much faster. Now, obviously, not everyone is a winner. Um, there are some that uh, happen that just don't, um, don't uh, pick up momentum. 
There are other ones that aren't really about keywords and more about our relationship building or they're about um, information that I know is valuable to my ideal client. But when it comes to the SEO side of things, I do want to be smart about it. I don't want to be writing lots of content that has a shelf life of a couple of weeks and then dies out. I want something that repays me for the rest of the time that my blog is around. And I do have um, quite a few of those blog posts now. So for me, it's about finding those opportunities. So go into Google Search Console or set that up if you haven't set it up yet and start looking for the opportunities that maybe you already have um, under your nose that you can start uh, putting together uh, blog posts on. That means that you're attracting um, traffic to your website on autopilot without you having to pay for advertising. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.